Welcome to Express Your Truth Poetry Class number six. Today we're going to be focusing on adding imagery into our poems using metaphor and simile. In our last class, we talked about personification, which is to assign a human characteristic on an inanimate object or on an idea or on a feeling. In this class, we're going to be talking about metaphor and simile, which is to find a link between two unlike things, right? It helps us to visualize what we're trying to portray in the poem better if we use metaphor and simile. A metaphor is a direct comparison, right? If you say her words were a prickly cactus, then you would know she was not being particularly nice, right? But if I say her words were like a prickly cactus, then that would be a simile. So a metaphor is a direct comparison, and a simile is where you use the word like or as when you make your comparison. They're very similar, um, metaphor and simile. And they're both very useful tools to help us convey our message in a way that is clear in a very compact amount of, of, of words that we use. So in our first example of simile or metaphor, we're looking at a stanza from Good Night by William Matthews. In her sleep, my wife has pushed away the covers. Her nightgown is above her waist and she has burrowed up like a worm sensing rain. So you can see that this is a metaphor. It's a direct comparison between his wife and the worm. And you can actually visualize her nightgown all lumped around her body in segments like a worm's body, right? Our second example today will be Nexus by Rita Dove. I wrote stubbornly into the evening. At the window, a giant praying mantis rubbed his monkey wrench head against the glass, begging vacantly with pale eyes. And the commas leapt at me like worms or miniature scythes blackened with age. The praying mantis screeched louder, his ragged jaws opening into formlessness. I walked outside. The grass hissed at my heels. Up ahead, in the lapping darkness, he wobbled, magnified, and absurdly green. A brontosaurus, a poet. So she's describing the praying mantis, and you can see, you know, the way they wobble, the way they move, they, they twist their heads. But she's comparing his head to a monkey wrench. So you can actually see that image in your mind, that comparison between the, the praying mantis head and a monkey wrench, the shape. <laughs> Praying mantises, of course, are very small, but she's making him larger than life, right? He's magnified and absurdly green like a brontosaurus, right? So he's, he's become larger than life in, in her mind as she's writing this poem about him, right? The, the commas leapt at me like worms. So this is like worms. This is a simile here. The grass hissed at my heels. So the grass is making that. That's the sound that the grass is making as she's walking through it. This is onomatopoeia. We really haven't talked about that. But onomatopoeia is when you use a word that sounds like what it is. So the, the grass hissed at my heels. So it's like that's the sound that, that her feet make as they walk through the grass. Right? The imagery in this poem is very lovely. So the nexus referred to in the title is her coming together with the nature that's around her. So her poetic mind as she's writing, connecting with all of these object and items that she's seeing around in her environment. These these things that are around her are all coming to life. They're all becoming very large and very big and very important to her as she's writing about them and she makes them permanent by by canonizing them in this poem. Yes, it's a lovely, lovely poem. The third poem we're going to look at today in terms of metaphor is called Wings by Enrique Argueta, our resident poet and friend it's a wonderful poem. I want you to listen to him, read it, listen to the alliteration, listen to the imagery that he portrays. The wings are a metaphor for the passage of time in our lives, right? As we, as we fly through our lives, you know, and, and witness the experiences that are part of our existence. <laughs> Yeah. 
At times I get so lost on the path I walk Looking out the window with the soul of a poet Love and pain both drive you insane A poison so potent in a delicate way Life is so short, same shit, different day Don't forget to wipe it when you flush it away Times are getting crazy, babies having babies Demanding respect without giving it, you crazy Time keeps ticking, ticking on me Living in the days of the heartless and the brave With one foot out and one foot in the grave At times I just exist, forgetting to live My only true possessions, my actions and assumptions Upset stomach due to overconsumption The moment of conception, I was begging to breathe Smiles and sorrows, never promised tomorrow, so If we were in a poetry class where we could all sit in the room together we would do an exercise where everyone would put different ideas into a bag and you would draw two of them out and try and decide how those two things could be compared to with each other. And that's how we would write a metaphor or a simile. But we don't have that luxury right now because this is an online YouTube video and we're not all in the same room together. So we're going to go ahead and use our magazine technique again to find two different objects that we can use to make a comparison. So right now I would encourage you to get your poetry journal out. Get any kind of book, periodical, any kind of text. And what I want you to do is open it up. Just flip it open and point. So my first word is shadow. And my second word is Let's do house, right? So now what we need to do in order to make our metaphor or our simile is to decide how we can make a comparison between a shadow and a house. So the first impulse might be to say that the house was casting a shadow, right? That's not imagery. That's just a statement of fact, right? We would have to make a direct comparison between the shadow and the house, right? So we have to decide how those two things are similar or how you can use a house to describe a shadow or how you can use a shadow to describe a house. So I went ahead and did an example of both simile and metaphor with, with the two words that we randomly selected, right? The simile would be, the shadow was like a house, vast and black, cast across the landscape. So I used vast and cast because those two words sound like those are rhyming words and it kind of gives it a nice flow. The shadow was like a house, vast and black, cast across the landscape. So I'm saying that the shadow was big. So then I'm in a metaphor. So in this one, the house was a dark shadow. So again, this is a direct comparison. It wasn't like a dark shadow. It was a dark shadow. The house was a dark shadow, still and foreboding, no movement within. Right? So it's kind of a big, creepy house. So if we go to our list of ideas, let's pick one of our ideas and try and, and develop a simile or a metaphor that would go with it. So I'm going to pick Floor Kitty for my, uh, for my image today. So here's my imagery poem for Floor Kitty. Underfoot, under feet, he darts with marksman-like accuracy under every footfall, especially when I am carrying laundry, a cascade of linens, a waterfall of undergarments, a thud and a whimper, devastation, were all in a pile every single time. Yes. So we're comparing my tripping over the cat and throwing laundry all over the place to a, a waterfall, to like, you know, the, 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 the flowing of the water as it cascades over the rocks as I cascade over my cat. <laughs> so as you are writing this week, when you're doing your 10 minutes of journal time every day, try to incorporate a metaphor or a simile into your poetic works. So you're gonna take two objects that are not the same and make a comparison to bring about a clear image of what you're talking about. Metaphor and simile are an excellent way to bring interest and imagery into your poems. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week in week seven as we continue our poetry series. Thank you.